guys, welcome to the channel, my name's CJ. Today we're going to be taking a look at Paul's incredible Mark 1 Ford Escort Mexico. This thing is a real home-built weapon. Let's take a closer look and learn more about it. So how long have you owned this car, Paul? It was originally bought in the early 2000s as basically a scrapper. And then we started the restoration, went through the shell, done all the modifications, strengthened them. So chassis-wise, we've obviously got a nice roll cage on there. The cage was actually bent for a guy in Cambridge who runs the roll centre. Back then, I think it was one of the first ones they actually ever did. He'd done all the bend for us, and then I'd done the, the cutting, shutting and welding for it. So engine-wise, you've still got the original motor that these cars come with but is that stock? No it's um the original Mexico's I think was something like 86 brake horsepower when it was originally dynoed I think it was about 162 it's the usual light and balanced high compression running on 45s competition AB clutch light and flywheel transmission wise straight cut gears did you say yeah yeah it's what they call the four speed rocket box makes a hell of a row it's got quite a long first which means you have to run quite low diff ratios to, to get it to take off. Is it stock diff or have you changed anything in the rear on there? No, we changed the diff for obviously different circuits, obviously for gear and wise, and uh, I run the, the good old fashioned plate type LSDs. And I think something that really impressed me with this car, and you can really tell when you're actually out driving in it how solid it feels, is the entire thing, just every possible joint that you could have, is rose jointed. just gone for a little spin just up and down a dual carriageway considering that this car's only got four gears sitting around about that 70 mile an hour mark I can't see how you could ever drive this more than about 20 minutes or so just general road driving on a track you got your helmet on and things I think you're just so much more in the zone you just kind of that noise you're just cancelling out a bit but that was just absolutely incredible the reaction that you saw was more just a reaction of just how incredibly ear splitting loud that was rather than just pure straight line speed. What I will say is that even though we're saying the car is 160, 170 brake, I wouldn't make you think that that's slow. Straight cut gears, this thing absolutely flies through and it picks up so quick. Really light car, just amazing little things. So first thing I really noticed about actually getting inside the car was this kind of split dash. What do they do that for? Um, if some Ford done back in the 70s for their rally cars, um, they would cut uh, 
a left hand drive dash up join it down the middle and that gives the navigator space for his clocks and timing gear oh i like that so i suppose the it would be the navigator really who was looking at all that just while the actual driver himself was concentrating on the road yeah yeah he'd have his trip meters and everything this side and obviously keeping an eye on everything else for the uh, for the driver <laughs> <laughs> Wake them up. There we go. So the car's mostly used as a little weekend toy, mostly heading to track days, shows. What's the favorite track that you've taken this car on? It's home on the smaller tracks. Um, Brands Hatch, Indy, Lyndon Hill, or Cadwell would be where it's really at home. Obviously the bigger, longer straights is obviously when your power comes in and you get swallowed up. But I suppose with a car like this, you're almost probably able to drive it flat out the whole way around. Yeah, I mean, it still takes a balance, but it, it does handle very well, especially with the modern semi-slick tires. So we're all done with Paul now, kind of came to an unfortunate end. Um, just at high RPM, it just sounded like it had a pretty bad miss. So we're definitely gonna organize to meet up with Paul, do a track day together, just have a little look, and just hopefully bully some of the big boys. Paul actually said last time he took the car out, uh, which I think was Ford Fair, there really wasn't anything that actually went past him. All the Mark I, Mark II Focus RSs just literally couldn't touch it through the corners. So power isn't everything. Yeah.